we're, we're talking um, on Wednesday nights when we do, on Sunday nights when we do this, on the subject of healing. And um, we want we just like to kind of cover maybe a little bit here and there on, on something, and um, and then get into uh, producing faith. You know, it's always good to have faith for that what you're trying to um, to get after. Amen. Isn't that right? Look with me if you into Acts chapter 14. I guess it wouldn't do me any. Uh, it wouldn't hurt any for me to take up the uh, the teaching we did a couple, of three years ago, or maybe longer than that, on the healings in the ministry of Jesus, where we cover every uh, all the different healings in the in the Bible. Now, obviously, I think there's 29 recorded incidences of healing. Uh, 14 of those are different. Or 19 of those. I mean, let's see here. 32 different healings, 32 recordings, 19 of those are, are different. In other words, uh, 13 of them are repeats from the Synoptic Gospels or whatever of, of, of a, another account. So maybe Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, maybe Matthew, Mark, and Luke cover the same event each time. Uh, that would be the same healing but recorded three times. So uh, when you go through the Gospels, there's 32 recorded healings, but you understand there's 19 different healings recorded. Does that make sense? You just have, you know, um, it's channel ABC, CBS, and NBC all covered the same event. That's not, that's not a different event. It's the same event, just recorded by three different networks. Well, we had the network of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Hallelujah. And they recovered. And then, of course, John's on the independent network. He, he has stuff that none of the others have. So we'll get into that sometime soon. We'll just on some of our Sunday night uh, healing rallies, we'll talk about that. If you've got any uh, prayer calls, you can bring them up. If you don't, well, just be blessed. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter uh, 14, looking, uh, let's just start in verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, and a great multitude, both the Jews and also of Greeks, believed. But the believing Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made up their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, both they speaking boldly. And, 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 and you know how, in the name of the Lord, he knows how the world is doing everything it can to get the church not to be bold. Why? Because the following results take place when they get bold. Are you here? Uh, in the name of the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Why? Because they were bold to speak his name. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when they were uh, as an assault, were made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews upon the rulers, with the rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them. Well, oh, that's great. And they were aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbia, Derby, uh, cities of Lyconia, and into the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. Hallelujah. So here they are, they're in one place preaching, getting, you know, and uh, getting people stirred up. Signs and wonders taking place, and they want to stone them and kill them. I'll tell you what, you know, all of us preachers could take a lesson from this. We think if we preach the word of truth and the Bible and everything, everybody's just going to love us. Probably if everybody loves you, you're not preaching the truth of the Bible. Hello. Because every time they preach in the Bible, they stirred up all kinds of stuff. They got Pope, people wanting to kill them, stone them, throw them out of the city, boil them in oil, go all kinds of stuff to them. Hallelujah. When they start seeing how great you are, uh, watch out. And uh, so there they preach what? The gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. He was born crippled. Couldn't walk. The same heard Paul speak. Stop. What was Paul saying? There they preached the gospel. What was Paul speaking? He was speaking what? The gospel. Amen. He was preaching the gospel. The same heard Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him and proceeding, perceiving he had faith to be healed. Now how did he get faith to be healed when he heard Paul preach? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. <clears throat> then the man had to have heard that Healy was God's will. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Healing had to be preached as part of the gospel in order for this man to have faith to be healed. Now, if he had just told him that you could be rich and give, gave biblical reference to it, 
<coughs> excuse me, I just swallowed that water and hit the wrong place. It's just kind of hanging out there. Trying to get me all choked up. I just get all choked up about the Bible. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfast in beholding, perceiving he had faith to be healed. So the faith, Romans 10, 17, faith, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We know, according to verse 7, that when Paul and those guys got there, they did what they preached, the gospel. This man who was impotent from his mother's womb, who sat, who was sitting there, heard Paul speak. This wasn't some kind of osmosis exchange. Wasn't some kind of, you know, um, um, <clears throat> special event. This was the gospel was preached, man's impotent in his feet, heard Paul speak, Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. He perceived. I'll tell you, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're walking in the Spirit, you can have perception. It may not even be a gift of the Spirit. It may not be word of knowledge or word of wisdom or discerning of spirits. Man, you can just perceive things by the Spirit, in the Spirit. You can get around people. You can tell people of faith or not. Not because you've got a word of knowledge. You're spiritually perceptive. And that doesn't come overnight. It comes with walking with the Lord, understanding things for yourself. Amen. Y'all hear you go home. So Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. Said with a loud voice, stand up right on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. See, he had to give action to his faith. Amen. You got to put faith into action. Amen. There's a lot of people who've been right at that point and then backed off and didn't add anything, didn't add anything to their faith, didn't add the action. In other words, the faith was there. The, it was, it was um, dormant faith or uh, inactive faith. It just needed some action to activate it. Now, we all know if you mix vinegar and baking soda together, you get a result. Everybody did that. I mean, 95% of the people you know it went to high school or whatever. At some point in time in school, somebody did the volcano experiment. You know what I'm saying? Came in with the volcano class experiment with a little tube in there, a little baking soda in there, and a, in a bag or something, and some vinegar. And some got real fancy. They had a little electric charge that would bust open the, the vinegar bottle or whatever that had stored the vinegar in, and it would fall on the vinegar and on the baking soda and shoot up through the top. And then people got real fancy, started putting red dye in it. You got red lava coming out. I mean, I mean, people just got really fancy. You know? There's a reaction. You see, you know, you've got to put action with your faith to get the reaction of the result. Amen. Now, the number one way to release your faith is by saying it. But that's not, that's the number one. It's not the only way. It's the number one way. In this case, this man didn't need to say, I thank God I believe I received my healing. This man needed to act on it. He had faith that it was there. Paul said, stand up right on your feet. And leap and walk. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's back this up just a little bit. <clears throat> and we, we, won't, we don't have to go a long, long time on this. But, um, Notice that when they came, it says there they preached the gospel. Good news. Now, some people say it's the, it's, it's the gospel of grace. You know what? Uh, the, the gospel covers more than grace. Amen. There's more, it's, God's broader than one subject or one definition. As a matter of fact, I did a study, and it doesn't take real long to do this kind of study. You can do a, you can do a search, and I looked up the word gospel of in a concordance, electronic concordance, came up. It's only called the gospel of grace once. It's called the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, called the gospel of God, called the gospel of Christ, called the gospel of Jesus. I mean, it's called, uh, one, one other terminology used 11 times. You know? So, um, we don't want to get limited to one thing. I do know this, the gospel is an inclusive subject, or an inclusive term of all that Jesus did for us. And it's not just spiritual salvation. It is physical healing. It is material blessing. Now, let me understand this. When I start talking about material blessing, I'm not talking about getting loony to. We're talking about God wants to bless you. God's designed you to be blessed. But he doesn't want, you know, it's, it's not that God wants to make every Christian multimillionaires. Hello. And uh, you lose your head and lose, your, lose everything and go, go nuts with it. I'll just be honest with you, that, I don't believe that's biblical for everybody to just run around and, you know, live, you know, sit up in some castle somewhere, multi-millions of dollars, and just them and Jesus hang out together. He called us to go reach the world. 
Amen. Two amens. Can I get three? Can I get four? Can I get five? Can I get six? <laughs> All right. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves you. Amen. So he heard Paul preach. He heard Paul speak. Now we know they preach the gospel. We have this impotent man. He heard Paul speak, and he had faith to be healed. Now I'm going to, I'm going to deduct from that, and I guess I'm in the dark place again. Is this better? That's better. Stay off the front row, Ed. I like the front row. I get closer to you. Hallelujah. I can only deduct that if the gospel is preached and the impotent, the impotent man heard Paul preach or speak and he had faith to be healed, that when Paul spoke, that man heard something in that message of the gospel that produced faith for him to be healed. That's the only deduction I can make. Something he said when he was preaching the gospel produced faith in the man that he could receive his healing. Amen. And the only since it was he had faith to be healed, then the only thing I can deduct from that is that in the message they preached of, of, of the gospel, healing was preached so in some manner or form. Amen. Well, if you go back in the Old Testament, we, we've done this numerous times, but I love to do it. Psalm 103 is a classic example. You know, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me, forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. Crown thee with loving kindness. I mean, he goes on and does all a good, lot of good stuff in that, that psalm. But notice that he says, who heals all thy diseases, who forgives all thy iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. Put them in a package together. Amen. I said, amen. It's 1 Peter 2, 24 in the New Testament, who his own self bear our sins. See, now that's talking about the sin. In his own body on the tree that we being dead, the sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Then he, then he goes on and says this. I mean, well, actually, you know, shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. He goes from the spiritual to the physical in the same verse. Well, no, that's spiritual. No, when Psalm 103 stated it was, it, was the, it was the spiritual and the physical in the same verse. Why? When we read Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and see God's suffering servant, you know, and, and all theologians agree, you know, that that's, that's a reference to Jesus. I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if a theologian is worth his salt, he believes that's, that's Jekyll about Jesus. You can't, you can't come up with anybody else that's talking about Jesus. You know, Psalm 50, uh, I mean, it's Isaiah 52, down around the end of that chapter, talks about, you know, uh, uh, about the, they looked on him, they couldn't even look on his visage, it was marred morning other man's, and he goes into 53, Lord, who hath believed our report, to whom his arm of the Lord extended. Amen. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities, you know, chastised by our peace was upon him, by his stripes we are healed. So it's, it's talking, it gets to talking about him, spiritual and physical. Well, why is that? Well, God made man a triune being, he made him spirit, soul, and body. Jesus came to redeem us, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. There are certain things that are apl applicable now and certain things that are applicable future. Now, we don't get a glorified body until Jesus comes. We have what? According to the book of Ephesians, we have the seal of redemption. We have this seal of redemption, the Holy Ghost. We'll get a glorified body. When, this, when the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout with the trumpet of the archangel, then this corruption shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. We will change in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. We'll go and meet the Lord there, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now are you here? That's over in Thessalonians. For which, which one? First or second? Whatever, whatever. One of them. Just look both of them up. Amen. He came to redeem the whole man. He redeemed our spirits instantly. When you get born again, your spirit's instantly redeemed. I mean, your spirit is born again. Now, your mind, the Bible says in Romans 12, to renew your mind. That's a progressive action. The full redemption of your body is a future event. Are you here? Now, we know, let me, let me share a couple things with you. Now, you're just going to look these up, right? Make a note of them, go look them up because I don't have the scripture references. I just had it jumping off place. All right? We know that when people die, they're separated from their physical body. You don't go hang out in some cosmic cloud somewhere. Because Paul said, to, to, um, for me to die is gain. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And he went on and said this, talking about that, that death, you know, he, you know that, that, we, that, we, that he that dies, departs, and is with the Lord. Amen? 
Remember we talk, kept talking about, you know, uh, I'm not stripped between two, whether to die and be with, and what? Be with the Lord? I'm in a stretch between two. Where is that? That's over in somewhere. He said, I'm in a stretch between two, whether to depart or to remain with you. And he said, well, to remain with you is needful. But to depart is to be with the Lord. See, when you leave your body, you go to be with the Lord. If you're born again, if you're not born again, you go to hell. All right, Philippians 1 3. I mean, having, having a desire to depart and be with Christ. As his terminology, I'm trying to get. I was trying to get the terminology right, which is far better. Now, listen. You don't. Your, your body goes into the ground. It returns to dust. It decomposes. Yet the Bible talking about the rapture of the church says those which are, are, are dead in Christ shall rise first. What are they talking about? They're coming back and getting their body. Hello. They're going to come back, pick up their body, and then on the way back up, by the time they get even with us, we get changed and we all go up together. They're, get, they're, get, they're getting their bodies back. But this time it's going to be a glorified, incorruptible, immortal body. We know they're in heaven because the Hebrew says there's a great cloud of witnesses. Amen. Well, what is it? What are we talking about? We got, there's two parts to, the, to, to man's bo phys, uh, being as far as, you know, the body and the spirit. The soul stays intact with the spirit. When you get separated from the two, the body goes into the ground from whence it came, and the spirit returns to the Lord. If you're born again. If you ain't born again, you're going to hell. Universalist, hyper stupid grace stuff, you're going to go to hell if you're not born again. Amen. Hello. I, mean, I believe in grace, but I don't believe in stuff where everybody's going to be saved no matter what. The Bible is too clear. Jesus came to redeem us from the sin, but you got to believe. Amen. If you, you know, he, Jesus, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. I don't care what somebody says. Jesus said. And that's good. If, 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 if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. <laughs> my, my, my. Hallelujah. But the physical body, the physical body goes, the body is not redeemed. But Jesus made provision, and God's always made provision. From the book of Exodus on, where he says, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, the Lord thy physician. He's always made provision for his people to have health. Are you here? Now these bozo, pinhead, dean bats, when Brother Hagin passed away, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I got in the flesh. Because if I could have reached through the internet and choked him, I would have. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Kenneth Hagin died, didn't have enough faith to keep from dying. Now, how stupid, can, and you know, people, they didn't listen to anything he said. I, I got a tape series from 1981, who, he was talking about some stuff and sharing stuff with somebody in healing school, went out and said, I like that Hagin fella, he don't believe in dying. He said, and he said, uh, some people just don't have any brains. He said, you're going to die whether you believe in it or not. If the Lord tarries, you're going to eventually die. You can, you can believe in not dying, and you're going to die at some point in time. Your body's going to wear out. You're going to, it's, going to be, it's going to be done with. You're going to go to heaven. Amen? He never said he wouldn't die. Are you here? But people just, people just mean and evil, full of the devil, full of religious devils. Hate, hate, hate people who believe in good things. You ever seen people like that? They get mad because somebody believes that God wants to do something good for you. They, got, they used to get mad at Oral Roberts because God is going to do something good for you today. They get mad. And get everybody saved every week. Come on down and get saved again. Get saved again. I mean, that was a frosty morning church. Get saved over and over and over again. Anyway. How many remember the Frosty Morn jingle? How many never heard the Frosty Morn jingle? I want y'all to go home tonight. I want you to get on the internet. I want you to look up Frosty Morn jingle. I believe Morn was M-O-R-N-E or M-O-R-N. Frosty Morn, two words. It was a, it was a uh, you know, sandwich meat, bologna, hot dogs kind of company from the past. And their little jingle was singing it over and over again, Frosty Morn. All right, hallelujah. Look it up. I want y'all to hear it. So next time I ask that question, everybody can raise their hand. I've heard that jingle. Hallelujah. It helps my sermons out. All right. When I want to do the over and over and over thing again, you can all, yeah, you know what it's talking about. All right. So, 
the body is separated from man, but it's, listen, although the body is not in full redemption, what do you mean full redemption? The glorified body. The incorruptible, immortal body that you will receive at the rapture of the church or, well, everybody gets it at the rapture of the church. It just doesn't matter. Whether it's, whether you're dead or alive, you get it at the rapture of the church. Because the saints that are dead in Christ come back and pick it up. Those that are here and alive remain. They get changed. They, and, they, and remember this, those which are alive remain shall not prevent them or precede them which are dead. That's what the scripture says. Why? Well, they're going to come back and pick theirs up. We get ours changed and we all go up together. And it's going to be quick. Are you here? But that body will be incorruptible and immortal. Well, in the meantime, God has made provision for you to have health and healing. God wants well bodies. Well, if you can't get sick, how you going to die, dummy? Do like they did in the Bible. Just get old and wear out. Hello? Just wear it out. I mean, 100, 125, 115, whatever, just get to where you know you've used up all this God use in it and leave. I mean, it'd be like the old prophets and call them in, call all the kids in, lay hands on them, bless them, curse them, throw your feet up and go home. Amen. Ready to go. I said ready to go. Y'all here, you're going home. That's how they did it in the Bible. They, they didn't have to be sick. You don't have to be sick to die. Why is God going to use something that was created out of evil as the gateway for his people to get home? They can just close their eyes and leave. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the human spirit's a powerful thing. The will of man's a powerful thing. I've seen people in hospitals, you know, holding on. Because a loved one was there and wouldn't let them go. They didn't want to let them go. They, they just hold on until that, that person released them. I've, been, I've prayed people to go. I said, go on home now. They leave. Praise God. I said, praise God. See and do it. The will, the will is a powerful thing. Well, now if we can do that, even in the stages of being, I've seen, I have sick people do that, you know, being in the stage of being sick and, you know, and dying, um, and, and but still holding on, and then pray and say, let, go ahead home, and they let go and go home. What, what happens if we learn to walk by faith and live by faith, and we walk out our days on the earth, and we finish our course, and we go, okay, I'm going, and take off? What victory is there? Praise God. I mean, that's victory. I said, that's victory. Y'all here, you're going home. Amen. So, but God made provision. We have that throughout. The, we have that in, the, in these different passages. Made provision for the body to be held well and whole while you existed on the earth until you wear it out. Amen. Why? Because now the body is death doomed. It's mortal. This mortal should put on the immortality. Your body's death doomed. Mortal means death doomed. And it's it's going to die wasn't God's original creation, but see, there's some things that, that haven't been fulfilled as far as the, the restoration of all things which are coming. Spirit gets born again, mind gets renewed, body gets to have healing and health and wholeness until you wear it out and leave. Amen. Say glory to God. Your will concerning your life will determine how long you live. You're not predestined to live 60 years, 40 years, 30 years, 90 years, or whatever. My family's genes, I'm going to tell you, you got your will has everything to do with it. You can choose to live a long life, or you can choose to go home early. Hello? Had a, um, had a classmate I went to Raymond with. Not a classmate, I'm sorry. He graduated ahead of me, but I knew him. Good, you know, he, he became a friend while I was out. He worked at the ministry. And... Um, you know, he died, or he died young. He died about 25 years old. But he had gotten uh, to preaching about heaven. And got, the, got over and got, started getting over to the Spirit and started talking about he just couldn't wait to see heaven. Couldn't wait to go home and be with the Lord. Just loved the Lord. Just wanted, I mean, just kept, got talking that way and went home. Woke, sat up in bed, coughed a couple times, fell back, and, was, and walked, wife woke up the next morning. He was gone. You can set your heart on heaven so much, you, you don't even want to stay here anymore. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't think that's a good idea because there's things God has for us to do. But people can do those things. You can leave. Um, later, just a couple, three years ago, his dad, this guy's dad, um, had kind of done all he thought he could do ministry-wise. 
went and found an old old minister friend, called him up and said, I'm, I'm coming down to visit you. I want you to pray for me that I go home and be with the Lord. Yeah. He wanted to be blessed and go home. And so he went down, found this guy. They got together. He prayed with him. He went home. Amen. Didn't die sick. Just went home. He's ready to go. I don't much believe that. I don't really care what you do or don't believe. That's your business. There's some things that you know are, are true whether you believe them or not. Now, they, want to, they, they won't apply to you or be applicable to you if you don't believe them. But they're still true. Jesus is Lord whether you believe that or not. Amen. You're going to die whether you believe it or not. Unless Jesus, unless Jesus comes back before you die, you're going to die. If you don't believe in hell, I don't care if you believe in hell or not. If you're going to go to hell if you don't, if you don't believe in Jesus, you will go to hell. And whether you believe in hell or not, it's not going to change the fact that's where people go. All right? Now, God has established these spiritual things and these spiritual laws, and they're true. And man is designed to live well. When you get born again, your spirit's instantly saved, instantly born again. You pass from death unto life. The nature of the Father is imparted into you. You begin the process by feeding on the Word of God, of renewing your soul. But through faith in God and His Word, you can keep your body well. Because it's part of the gospel. So we're going to bring it up here. So we kind of talk, it's always been throughout the Bible that, that healing and, and forgiveness went together. Even James, look over in James chapter 5. We've quoted this before, but it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to do it again. You used that scripture last month, and I'm going to use it again next month. So what about that? Hallelujah. Or I might use it next month. <laughs> Is that all right? It says in James chapter 5, um, verse 13 says, Any sick among you, or is any afflicted among you, let him pray. Any merry, let him sing songs, psalms. Any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save. Now, the word save, again, we've said this and we'll say it again, is sozo in the Greek. The word sozo has, more, has a broader meaning than saving in the sense of being born again. The word covers spiritual salvation, physical healing, material blessings, deliverance from evil. It's an inclusive salvation term. Uh, it is where the Greek, the Greek word soterius, which is the salvation, comes out of. It's the sozo word group. Hallelujah. And it means to heal. So really, with the prayer of faith shall say the sick, the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise them up. Listen to this. And if he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. Notice how healing and forgiveness went hand in hand. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint as to why. The same sacrifice was used to procure forgiveness and healing. We go back to the Isaiah example that's, that's repeated in Matthew 8, 17, and then in 1 Peter 2, 24, uh, Isaiah 53, 5, 4, 5, and 6, 3, 4, and 5. In referring to Jesus, he carried our sin and he carried our sicknesses. The reason they go hand in hand so much throughout the Bible is the same sacrifice used for the healing is the same sacrifice used for salvation and vice versa. The same Jesus that saved you, the same Jesus that heals you. Amen. I, you know, the Foursquare Church, how many of you heard the terminology of the Foursquare Church? There's a denomination called the Foursquare Church. Well, the reason the Foursquare is they have four major tenets of faith concerning Jesus. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, Jesus the Baptizer and the Holy Ghost, and Jesus the soon returning King. Those are the four squares. How you, you had little baseball hats with, you know, little the, all, logos for each one of those points. And they're called Foursquare, the Foursquare Church. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, Jesus the Baptizer from the Holy Ghost, and Jesus the soon returning King. Well, that's, pretty good, that's pretty good stuff. Don't you think so? I think so. I like the Foursquare. They're, I like their, that, 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 their approach. I've mean, got a solid foundation. He's my healer. He's my Savior. He's my baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And he's my soon to return King. Glory to God. That's a good foundation to build your house on. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, Jesus is your healer and he is your Savior. So, you can go to the same place that you went to be saved, born again, and get healed. 
because it was the same sacrifice. And the same sacrifice that was accepted of the Father for your salvation is the same sacrifice that's accepted of the Father for your healing. Amen. We can thank God for that, can't we? We can be grateful to God for that, can't we? Oh, thank God that Jesus is our healer. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus went round about their villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Preaching, teaching, and healing. That was Jesus' ministry. Hallelujah. Now, we only have 19 different recorded events in the Bible, but John said if everything he did was recorded, the world itself couldn't hold the volumes of it. He supposed. You know, in other words, he was using a grand, uh, uh, he was using a large terminology. In other words, there's a lot of stuff Jesus did we just don't have recorded. Are you here? Just the highlights. See, the Bible doesn't have to be a micro detail book. It can be an overview and get the point across. Amen. I mean, the history of Israel is, a, is really an overview. It's not a micro detail of all, all their, everything they did. We don't have, we don't have daily events, of four, daily journals of 400 years of captivity. You know how long that to take to write that? We get an overview. They were in bondage for 400 years, okay? They were slaves for 400 years. We get it. We don't need to know Aunt, Aunt Ethel as a husband was killed by the, by the soldiers in the, in the pits 200 years in. You know, now the Bible doesn't always have a micro detail of stuff. It gives an overview. And the overview gives you the essence of the will and purpose of God. The overview concerning health and healing is God's, is, Jesus is the healer. God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord thy physician. Hallelujah. That there is a method to receive help and healing from the Bible, and God wants us well. Not one time do I see in the ministry of Jesus him running by a perfectly healthy person, laying hands on them and saying, be a leper. I have a purpose in that. There are people who believe. Maybe some of y'all used to, but you've been in this church long enough to know better. Hallelujah. That God makes people sick because he has a higher purpose. Well, if that were true, and Jesus is, the, the Bible says in Hebrews, the first chapter, verse, uh, uh, starting in verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, he says he is the express image of his person. Jesus is the exact, Jesus himself said, I came not and do my will, but the will of him that sent me. I only do those things which I see my father do. Now, if God is into making people sick because of a higher purpose, we should have at least seen Jesus have one recording of Jesus walking up to a perfectly healthy and normal person, laying hands on them or speaking over them, saying, Be ye leprous, because I have an ultimate, ultimate higher purpose than you can understand, and walking off. At least one. If we had one, I'd have to say that was how God operates. I'd have to say that. But I can't find one. There's not one. The only thing I ever see him do to lepers is cleansing them. The only thing I see him doing to sick folk is healing them. Hello? Never do I find him making them sick. Hello? Y'all here you go home. Well, if we can't find an example of what we teach people from the Word of God in the ministry and life of Jesus, or in, the, listen, I forget, okay, this, that, was the, that was the ministry of Jesus, that's an Old Testament ministry, which technically it was. Let's move into that book of Acts. I don't find Paul walking up to the, anybody going, you know, I make you sick in the name of Jesus. Now, the only thing we have even close today is the man who tried to resist the gospel, and, a, and, and he missed him, and he went away blind for a season because he was trying to pervert the gospel. There, and that was a judgment on someone trying to thwart the preaching of the gospel. That's not just a normal person that minding their own business, not, not having any reason. There's, you know, in that, you know, we know that's at least that's a judgment. Are you here? You're going home. You cannot, you just don't walk up to random folk. And that's how you got all these Christians who, who, who come to church and people walk up to them, pat them on the back. Well, you never know what the Lord's going to do. You don't, we don't understand why God does what God does. Well, I do. God does things according to his word. Amen. God does it the way his word says it. God does not do it just arbitrarily, you know, uh, what's, what's that little uh, thing where you shoot the ball in there and it's spinning? 
gambling thing. What's that thing? Roulette. roulette table. God doesn't play roulette with your life. Jerry is not number 42, and God spins the, the black plague ball in there, and if it lands on Jerry, Jerry's not going to die. God doesn't do things that way. God's a better planner than that. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So Jesus has provided healing for us all. Amen? Hallelujah. Anybody need to lay hands on you tonight? Hallelujah. Y'all well, healthy, well, wise, amen. Glory to God. I got, we have got some prayer cloth folk now. Praise God. Who's the, this is the Morgans, isn't it? You give them out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand up. Stretch your hands out this way. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah. Solemnly, we in accordance with your word, even as the Bible says that, that uh, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul and so much that aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from his body and they were laid on the sick and the evil spirits went out of them and they were made whole. Were they hands on these claws now in the name of Jesus thinking that special miracles are wrought? And they're taken into the sick and even demon possessed and the evil spirits go out of them and their bodies are made well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that cancer is driven out. We thank you that, that AIDS is driven out. We thank you that lunatic is driven out. We thank you that that, um, oh, hallelujah, we thank you that every disease that we know of or don't know of is, it can, is no match for the anointing of God. We speak over these now in the name of Jesus and thank you that the healing anointing goes into that. And when laid on their bodies, they're made whole and set free in Jesus' name. Amen.